So we're on our way to what is called a, a deanery meeting and it's also, I, I guess you can say, a vicariate meeting uh, so that we can all coordinate. Uh, so it's about 45 minutes away, right? Just about. Yeah, so it's about 45 minutes away. You know, we'll just have a conversation. Um, and so, Father Nicholas, just, uh, just act normal. Done. You're not acting normal yet. Well, how has pastoral year been so far? You're about two weeks in, right? Yes. And so your pastoral year is kind of like an internship year where you're full-time at the parish, learning new insights as to the day-to-day -day life of a priest, of a parish, of a diocesan priest in particular. So how's it been about two weeks into the job? Things are going fine, and I'm learning a lot about the, the priest, the uh, diocesan priest's life, and you know what, how it functions, and the meeting, everything else going on. So far, it's been great, and I'm looking forward to learning more about it, how, especially with the parish life, especially the youth ministry. That's the best part. They are very energetic and very fun to be around, and ready to. You know, Readiness to learn, and I'm looking forward to be part of it. Yeah. Come on, that's that's the right answer. That you're enjoying uh, Saint Bartholomew. So that wasn't. We weren't really asking for your honest opinion. Now you mentioned what's it like being a priest, or you know, what the life of a priest. So you've already been in the rectory for what a couple of. Uh, couple, you said a couple of weeks, right? Yes, two weeks. And you, you've uh, have you enjoyed uh, life in the rectory so far? Yeah, I, I, I do actually. I do enjoy. It. Yeah, that's also that's also the correct answer. Sometimes there's this impression that we we have Sunday mass, and that's pretty much it. And then we we go golfing or fishing, you know. Especially because Mon is a good fisherman, oh, so no. he he knows how to catch anything. In fact, he was going to go over. He said he was going to go over to a ditch somewhere and catch some fish. That's how good he is. That's he, that's how good he is. There's, uh, you know, there's. I don't know if there's any kind of fish, but he'll he'll pull one out anyway. So this is one of the things that we do. We have almost constant meetings. Yeah, I mean, know. for example, this morning I went to meet with a family who really uh, just suffered a, a very tragic uh, loss of a family member, and spent time with with the. Um, the husband and, and the family, and, and that's that's a big portion of the life of, of a priest in our day to day ministry. You know, people yeah. will call and, and they'll say, you know, they have a particular need to discuss, uh, yeah. you know, a family issue, or you know, maybe their family member is, is struggling with a particular yeah. church teaching or the practice, a certain practice of the faith, and they need some more, uh, you know, instruction on why or, or how a certain thing needs to be done or why something might be done. Why do we practice? Why do we need to come to Mass every week? You know, what's what's the need if, if I have a personal well, you don't, we relation? Don't, but, we don't, but we don't need to go to Mass every week because I, I can have uh, God in my life when I just go out camping. Exactly. So that's something that people sometimes will yeah. think. And, oh, you and don't they, think that? You don't think that? And they may not see the issue with that. Yeah. But it's, it's a very serious thing to to be in, in error about because it's yeah. it's not only about my personal relationship with Christ. If I do have an authentic, true relationship with Christ, that necessarily means that I am drawn into the communion of the faithful, into the body of the church. And hey, are, so, you, are you guys listening to this? Are you guys listening to this? This is... This is very valuable what you're getting right now. And this video is free, by the way. It's on YouTube, <laughs> but it's free. And so you're getting you're getting uh, infused wisdom from above, from what Father Nicholas is saying. How about you? Do they go to you for, uh, what about financial advice? Do they go to you for financial advice? You know, not so much. Do they go to you for fantasy yeah. football Well, advice? I do have excellent tips on that, but that, yeah. that I don't give for free. I actually charge for that, so oh, that's, a, that's a separate thing. Oh. I can't. Sorry, folks. I tried. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, I don't know. 
I'll try next time again. We're also having to manage staff and in a bigger parish, you gotta manage a lot of staff members. People are wondering, well, 30 staff members? You know, why do you need 30 people? Well, again, 6,000 families, right? So look at all the different things that a parish is expected to do because we have a lot of services uh, that were that's expected of us now and there used to be back in the day, I guess 100 years ago, when parishes weren't expected to have necessarily a youth ministry and a comprehensive catechesis program, marriage preparation, how intense that is these days, especially, and it, and it needs to be that way, especially now. And you've got um, you've got adult faith formation. And of course now the finances, excuse me, the finances take a lot more too, because internal controls needs to be, needs to be implemented because there, there, there are so many different ways now that fraud can be committed. And so, you know, you gotta have, for us, we have two bookkeepers and a business manager. And when we have a bigger, we have a bigger parish, you gotta keep track of contributions that people make. So we have a contributions person. And in a parish of our size, we, we want to develop our stewardship. So, you know, growing in our sacrificial giving, our service and our prayer, you need like one person to, to manage a team for that. Music you know? director, director yeah. of liturgy. Director of liturgy, music director, exactly. Uh, and that liturgy director needs an assistant because uh, of all the responsibilities that she has. Um, and even in music, you got to have a Spanish uh, person. And you got a bilingual parish. The, the work is doubled. So you got to have someone that can do Hispanic ministry. So we've got uh, somebody in charge of that, Deacon Rolando. So thank God that we have him. Uh, and then on the music side, you got to have a, a, a part-time Spanish music director. Because um, that, that's, a, again, a separate set of masses um, that have to be managed. And, and then we have someone in charge of sick calls. So Sister Lucy is in charge of, of reaching out to our five nursing homes. And that's still not all the nursing homes and all the hospice care. So we're still not reaching out uh, regularly to everybody like we would like to, um, but we do we, the, we do the best that we can. You know, when you, when you add up all the staff members, it, it, it adds up very quickly. You know, again, with the parish of 6,000, that's what it takes. And, and I know people say, oh, Father, you're so overwhelmed. And, um, you know, and so, and so man, you're probably gonna experience some of that too. Where you, you'll, you'll, you might anticipate or see a bit more in terms of being in the life of the priest. You see that the that there, there's more work than we can possibly accomplish. At the same time, I, I I don't complain about it because it's it's all very blessed. I mean, what do you what do you think, Father Nicholas? I think you're stronger than I am. So uh, this is true. You know, you're holier and stronger, and 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 you're you're doing ministry. He does about twenty seven. 27 hours of ministry a day and and uh, he, he doesn't plan to sleep until he's until he he's got he's, he really puts off his sleep until he's dead yeah I'll sleep after I die yeah well he's still gonna even after he dies he'll 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 catch up on his work there will never be a shortage of work to be done and at the same time to hold in a healthy tension the the balance of of doing what we're able to do um, with prudence and and being a good steward of the gifts of not only the, the ability that I have and the gifts God has given me personally, but also within the time that I have in a day, you know, at the end of the day, I'll never be able to accomplish everything that I would like to accomplish, but I, I have to prioritize certain things to be done well. And, and that's only, you know, discerned well through prayer, and your instruction as, as my pastor. People have all different kinds of ideas of what the church should do more of. I, I think the presupposition is that anything that, that is good that can be done should be should be done at the parish. And, and really a lot of these good things should be done outside of the parish, out in the world, so it's more accessible. Because some people aren't gonna show up to a parish. And, and, you know, if you say, oh, such and such thing is going to happen at St. Bartholomew Church, some people might not want, want to even go to the church because they don't go to church in general. Um, and they don't want to go and do something that's churchy. But if that, that same lay person, for example, wants to do it at the parish, instead he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go start this on, on my own or I'm going to, you know, join a club that will allow me to do that. 
and then they can, they can pass out uh, papers or invitations at their work and with their family. And heck, if it's, if it's something that's worth it, they can even advertise it at our parish. If it's something that's really good and, and, and noteworthy, we would maybe put some, some flyers on the, on the bulletin board. I mean, what do you think about that, Father Nicholas? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And that has to do with the mission of the church. It's meant not for her, you know, just to be curved in on herself to minister to her own members, but to go out into the world and, and to evangelize. That's that's why we're here. What so, kind of what kind of le- what kind of Christian lessons can we draw from from fantasy sports, fantasy football? Fantasy football. That's a little bit tougher to make a case for. No, no, add this on the YouTube though. Okay, you have to edit it. Yeah. Last one. Do you have um? Do you ever come with a plan where, as a community, where you can cook a, maybe once a month to um, like bring families together, like to eat lunch together? Like if I, I thought that would be a great idea. Like, sit, like if all of us one, just once a month, yeah. staff would like, like talk to Knight of Columbus uh, yeah. with donation and cook and then Absolutely. bring the, the poor and then we can just join and eat with them. Just like Martha's Kitchen. Absolutely. I think that's, I think that's a fantastic idea. What do you think about See, that? Mon, this is, this is what happens when Mon is <laughs> contemplating the Divine Mysteries and comes up with great ideas like this. What do you think, Father Nicholas? Excellent idea. Yeah. And the only way to follow up with an excellent idea is to follow through with an excellent idea. Oh, there it is, Mon. There is your project. We were just talking about that. Seriously. <laughs> we're talking about him doing a project. An actual, uh, you know, a pastoral initiative. There you have so it. So there it is, Mon. Make it happen, bro.